There's also an element that we've touched on in a lot of different ways, but really haven't addressed directly, which is the different forms of power mm -hmm. that exist within the world, right? So obviously there's violence is power. Right. Money is power. Mm -hmm. As you guys were talking about the power of a name yeah. and the influence that just saying a name could have in the stories and so of that, that psychological effect. Um, and then of course there's just, you know, pers the power of persuasion and the ability to be political and to make alliances. So not just mm -hmm. fight, but also to bring people together. And you know, we see in a lot of these characters um, or a combination of them, all these different kinds of power <laughs> being exercised, which again, mm -hmm. is, I think it makes it such an interesting story. Yeah, well, that that's yeah. like, um, you know, people like Littlefinger and the spider, you know, the spider is very much just uh, influence power, like a very extreme level of that, right? And then Littlefinger, mm -hmm. Uh, is 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 to some degree that, but he's also very much a, a money guy, um, and and then then you go to Tyrion, who is who is who is very much a manipulator. He's he's able to do all that sort of stuff. He does have money to some degree, and he's got that he's got that um, that name of his father as well. Again, it's it's like you, he can use that name, um, and it will have effect over certain people and other people maybe not so much. But but that he st he like you say he does have that um uh, to a point where he can use the the name of his father to to uh to influence people right well, um, just, um, then, a lannister pays his debts if you need to um have a trial by combat yeah well that's true as well you know like like uh, they've they've made i mean that's so much that those are the the words of the family that 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 um i have that... to correct you the words are hear me roar oh, but the are, unofficial right. the unofficial <laughs> the title and uh, the unofficial oh. words are a lannister always pays his or her he debt. he made the same mistake branded ah yeah <laughs> oh shit! i just got i just got schooled yeah you're right i apologize <laughs> yeah but um but that that um still that what, what's the word i'm looking for you know having that reputation mm -hmm. still, that motto know. is still i mean mm -hmm. people so much so that people in westeros don't know the lannister's words they know a lannister yeah. always pays their debts yeah true story yeah they so it's like you know and i mean that that uh, one of the main reasons they're so powerful is because they, they they are on top of that gold mine basically right that's they've got mm -hmm. so much gold the gold from 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 Lan uh, uh whatever the place you call it um uh, yeah. Is it is it cast? Uh, well, I, I I just call I just say the gold from the Westerlands because I don't know specifically where they mine it because I got to know real yeah, yeah. stuff. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I I I think that and, and to uh, Christie's point, yeah, I think that one thing that's interesting to analyze are the conglomerations of power, how each person um, reflects a certain type of power. You know, Sansa, for example, Sansa is sort of has the power of beauty right of being uh, and, and that's kind of when we have i don't think we talked about it. it's not necessarily the power of sexuality because she's not really people see her in a sexual light but she herself is not yet sexual particularly in the books um yeah. she uh just the fact that she is named stark and is a great beauty draws people in makes people want to abduct her makes people want to be like her or to know her or to scorn her um mm and right now you know in both the series and the books you sort of see sansa trying to decide what other type of power she can wield can she wield um the power of influence or can she wield the power of being a stark or um can she be like littlefinger and attempt to use guile and manipulation um and i think that that's that's going to be an interesting road for her uh, in terms of what type of power is going to be best for her to wield um, mm -hmm. to get what she wants um, out of the Game of Thrones, which is still unknown. We don't really, you know, of all the people we know their motivations or can guess at their motivations, we just don't know what Sansa wants. Yeah, she's very much, uh, you know, passive for quite a lot of um, uh, quite a lot of the story so far, right? She kind of, you know. Um, she, she, I mean, she changes quite a lot when she goes to, uh, that place, the Eyrie. The Eyrie, yeah, the Eyrie, yeah. Yeah. Um, she changes quite a lot there. Um, obviously she has to, but, um, you know, she's still very kind of, yeah, you can't really see what she wants and, and maybe, you know, she's still quite an immature character. Um, you know. She's very she's, reactive, she's, not proactive. She's not like mm, Arya. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's right. 
yeah and you see that right from 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 the beginning right the the the, the difference of those characters you know Arya very much a um you know a rebellious character and and Sansa just kind of doing what needs to be done being you know uh you know learning her her words and 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 doing the sewing and all that sort of shit you know she's like oh, yeah. a perfect female archetype for what what a woman should be in that time and place mm -hmm. right? sewing and beautiful and passive and receptive and that's all she wants as well right like at the beginning she's just like this is all i want I'm to marry a prince and, doo -doo 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 and have babies <laughs> you know yeah yeah mm. and um i think that as you know and one thing you know that that moment where uh the house stark is sort of falling in king's landing and aria is just you know she's running for her life and santa just kind of runs back to her room and, and locks the door and it's like honey you got to escape the red castle okay uh -huh. you, you can't you know you're you're you can't just stay here with these people um but yeah. but that's that to me is the ultimate contrast between Arya and Sansa is Arya is constantly exploring trying to gain you know not necessarily trying to gain knowledge just her curiosity leads her to um, learning things that that are going to help her where Sansa doesn't yet have that intellectual curiosity either um, mm. Mm. that that I think has led Arya to the point that that she's at um, even I, I you wouldn't I couldn't envision Sansa going across the narrow sea right no um, but Arya mm. is if nothing more curious about what is the house of black and white where did jack and hagar come from um yeah, what yeah, yeah. you know how can i two faces and stuff right um yeah how can i how can i learn about this so um and it's kind of interesting that as well because it's 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 kind of it's kind of a um you know like as a reader uh you know that is something we also are interested about so we kind of can live through that because she's so curious and we are as well and we kind of you know and so if she, like if she was just sansa then you just be like ah, crap you know she know she's heard about all these things but she doesn't know <laughs> and explore them but you know as a reader who was curious about what these things are you know it's great because you can obviously live through that and it's it's um i suppose a good way to reveal uh, you know parts of the world and 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 the way the way the world works and all that sort of business as well is through a curious character like that you know oh yeah and yeah. i you know i i do love sansa i am not going to sit here and not in front on sansa because while everybody every, every, everybody else was like oh sansa she's so dumb and i'm like wait a second wait a second this is a young woman who understands one principle very well that the less you say the better off you are Okay, in there, in the Game of Thrones that's being played in what I call the Red Castle, just to be a dick about it, um, and the Game of Thrones that's being played inside of the Red Keep and in the centers of power is that if you know stuff, you are in danger. Littlefinger proved that. That moment where Cersei has Littlefinger, you know, um, by the throat, you know, has her guards have him by the throat, and she says, look, power, knowledge might be power, but power is power, right? Mm. The more you know, the more dangerous you are. And Sansa, at the very least, understands if I just keep my fucking mouth shut and don't say anything, you know, too untoward, then no, people will at least think I'm dumb. And so they won't look to me for, for knowing or knowledge or, oh, she might know my secret or she might be listening because people think Sansa's just basically a dumb mute, which mm. is good for them. Uh, for her, Sansa is partially, in my mind, she's alive in somewhat because she kind of kept her mouth shut, pretended to be dumb, knows things, right? Knows things intellectually because you can see it in her point of view chapters, but mm. was smart enough to be like, you know what? I'm just going to say whatever the standard line is here because I don't want anyone to know what I know and what I don't. And mm -hmm. I think that that was, that was smart of her. And two... We underestimate Sansa because Sansa's met every major political player in their time. Robert Baratheon, Cersei Lannister, Littlefinger, uh, Varys, Mace Tyrell, Marjorie Tyrell, Elena Tyrell. Um, Sansa has met many of the major political players in the Gatirian Lannister, um, her husband. Um, she's met many of the major players and has learned from them. Um, yeah. And learns from Littlefinger, and so I think it's going to be to me. It's going to be interesting to see how she applies all of that knowledge. I think that's what I look most forward to when it comes to Sansa. Um, and I, I, I can't. And, and same with Arya. I want to see how she applies 
the knowledge of the house of black and white. And um, just to make one more point about Arya, um, I think it's interesting that Arya is, she is no one, but she's also still someone. She's clearly still, Ar has always been Arya Stark of Winterfell, but in some ways she has shed her previous identity enough that she can be considered no one. And I think that there's an interesting dichotomy there that I'm not quite, I don't think I'm quite articulate enough to be able to articulate, but um, give me some time and maybe, you know, I might have some cheeseburgers or something. And um, <laughs> I'll definitely can, can articulate it at some point, but she's, she's the ghost of house Stark. Yeah. Hey, See? the ghost will always be ghost. Not, you know, the, 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 the dire wolf. Well, Margot Rivera, yeah, but um, on the sense <laughs> on the on the sense issue, there's another element to roles in the world, in the mm -hmm. world building, that relate to the role of the eldest born of of the sexes. Right. So the eldest born son and daughter, they have special roles in family negotiations. So one of the things you know that Sansa's character really was by that particular role actually constrained from the start. And it's not until, you know, at the trial, I think, of Littlefinger, where she has to make a decision about what she's going to say, that she actually has autonomy for the first time in her life. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think for, for Sansa's character, I, I agree, for a long time, she was really boring because she had to be, as you pointed out, to survive. Um, uh, and so if you think about her arc, it's just, yeah, she was like really confined for a long time. So in in some ways it's it's not that bad, I think, with, with the book, because that means Sansa is still very fresh to us. We don't know much about how she's going to react to things. And that's kind of amazing to have, considering how far in the book you get before that starts to happen. Yeah. Mm. She, she always, uh, I think, yeah, when, whenever you have a, a Sansa chapter, uh, it, it always comes across as very innocent, very, very, uh, you know, immature. Well, you know, immature and not a and not a negative way, but just you know, um, and and very kind of passive, like like you say. And yeah, it's I suppose I suppose that that's something to do with with that how she's just kind of riding through, um, and she. Um, yeah, again, to do with with the way that she's learned. You know, you were saying about her just having to listen and 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 absorb rather than actually saying things. You know, mm -hmm. like um, she would always talk about you know the courtesies that she'd have to learn to you know to and and it was always clear. Like when she met the queen and stuff for the first time, they always said, "Oh, you know, you you obviously know your courtesies and all that sort of business." So she knows all that stuff and she knows how to apply that stuff to appease uh, you know, the various people and their egos and, and all that sort of business, which, uh, you know, is definitely, um, you know, and something you, I don't think that that would really apply to Arya. She would either, she wouldn't, uh, know, or she just wouldn't want to, you know? It's yeah. A, and I, I agree with you. I think that Arya doesn't care, you know? Mm. Um, and I suppose and that's why she ran as opposed to, to, to Sansa would, you know, stay. She, she uh you know it's that different different of choice one of them would would bend the knee and one of them would run right and uh in a lot of ways you know the, the, the i know that this comparison is made a lot in the books that aria is more in some ways she's more northern right that the the implication is that aria is much more of the north is much more yeah. like a a um a she's got the brown hair as well you know right. that she's got she the brown looks, hair so. right she looks mm. more like ned and she's yeah. very, and she has much more of the attitude of a free, of a person who's like the free folk than, um, because I don't like to call them wildlings because I love them. <laughs> I love like, wildlings. You make my heart Um Yeah, and, and Sansa being more like, you know, more like Catelyn and, and, yeah. and, and you know. And and the the kind of proper Tully sort of thing mm. going on, um, mm. I I appreciate Arya's wildness, <coughs> right? And I think we all do. I think we all 
in, in, in some ways, you know, if you watch the show or if you read the books, you really want to be like Arya. You want to mm. be, you want to, you know, I'm the type of person, I want to subvert the roles. I want to friggin', you know, undermine people, but I also kind of want to, you know, be ruthless and vicious and all mm. that. You know, there's, there's that, there, there's Sticking something, the end. right? There's yeah. something really awesome about Arya, but, um, there's also something dark and mysterious about her that mm. you, you know, and, and there's, there's obviously still a hurt little girl in there. There's obviously still a person who has lost her family, her brothers, her, you know, her sister, uh, even if her sister isn't dead, her sister's distant, um, mm. her mother and father. And so she is trying to, um, to overcome Run. that hurt, right. Via violence, via, whatever you know because as as uh christy said earlier becoming hard and becoming distant from her emotions and i think that her training in the house of black and white um is sort of a coping mechanism right becoming no one means detaching yourself from all of those family ties and all those things that um somebody ring, rang ring, it. ring ring no not me oh it's michael okay i think he's he muted himself continue Okay. Um, I think that, that the House of Black and White is for her a, a, a good coping mechanism because it detaches her from those family ties. It detaches her from all of those, the emotions that came along with losing her sister and her, and her brothers and everyone else um, and allowed her to focus on Arya. Arya, who is no one. Arya, who is um, a singular person, not a member of House Stark, not a a child, you know, of of winter or of summer, but just Arya. Um, and I think that allowed her to refocus in a way that um, ultimately is going to be positive for her. Maybe not positive in the way that we would judge it, right? <clears throat> because you know we live in a society that is built upon, you know, the vow is surpassed the values of medieval society in a lot of ways, um, but in a way that for her society and her time is is a lot is pretty healthy i would say yeah and mm. also she's coming to a very under different understanding of death yeah than anybody she's grown up with yeah. you know so that's another thing that's set kind of sets her apart in terms of her character development is her time there and um the things that happen to her and the things she sees and does definitely yeah. agreed mm. Well, the the whole um you know shedding of 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 oneself and 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 distancing from the family and all that sort of business is kind of uh what a lot of the Stark kids have kind of had to go through right i mean you know john obviously has has to lose his name to become part of the night's watch bran mm -hmm. um bran is becoming this this other thing you know he's obviously had to to you know from that as well that they've all lost the power i mean they probably all lost the power of that name when 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 ned was off you know initially oh and, and to some degree because because then obviously rob took over from that but then you know rob's gone as well so you, you know but that so that that diminishing of power from 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 the name they've, they've they've had to they obviously have to try and find different ways of 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 gaining some power right is it um and and i think that's kind of obviously what they're doing you know oh yeah I, I think that, um, you know, and, and Sans, almost, you know, there's almost a the parallel there between not necessarily the method by which it happens, but Arya and Sansa both having to distance themselves from this identity, Arya becoming airy, you know, um, and rolling around with Hot Pie and Lummy and um, uh, uh, Gendry. Gendry, right? Mm. And um, Sansa becoming the disgraced daughter of Lord Eddard Stark and having to distance herself from the Stark name and every and and even before that, you know, she has to distance herself from from her Starkness when her wolf is killed. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so I think that their their journeys are parallel in that way. And and you're right, you know, it's all of them. Even Rob has to distance himself from. Um, his own father's legacy in a lot of ways because his father wasn't king and and nobody who had been a stark for the last 300 years had been a king um mm -hmm. and so he's got to take on a new wing and on uh, he's a new wing he's got to take on a kind of a new identity as a stark who is also a king and that means distancing himself from kind of the humble honesty of his father um, yeah, yeah, yeah. which ultimately he doesn't do enough you know yeah, um, he relies too much on weapons and not enough on guile. True. True. 
Mm. And he's also very, very, uh, you know, honorable, like his dad still, you know, like that. I mean, that that's the downfall of Ned and that's kind of the downfall of, of, well, he of was, Rob as well. He was, he was thinking with his dick. <laughs> yeah, in but, the, no, but he... in, the recap, in the recap in the Game of Thrones, she's laying on the bed with bare ass, and he's like, "I've got all this bit, all this bed, and all this bed, and all this ass." <laughs> like, come on, <laughs> come on! You're gonna write a letter. You're gonna come over here. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but still, he, you know, he. But in the end, he 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 did the honorable thing, which was to go and 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 you know, wed the fray chick, right? Oh no, sorry, uh, to, to get the, um. The, the the his his uncle or whatever to you know well but that was a little, too the... little yeah but it was i think at that point yeah it was too little too late that was why he fell down in the guile he didn't realize that as a king you don't get to choose mm. you know he um you know edward the fourth of england made a radical choice by marrying the woodvilles and it ended up creating quite a lot of problems for everybody um yeah, so yeah, yeah kings aren't free to make those kinds of choices and he made the mistake of thinking he was still free yeah, but so he should instead of instead of trying to appease and and be and I mean I suppose he had the he probably had, he had the the pressure of needing the phrase as well, right? So it was it was needing the phrase and also trying to do an word. honorable thing at the end. But he yeah. had given his word, and he yeah. broke his word. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So, but but he could have he could have could he he could have taken a different, you know, he didn't have to go and you know break bread with him and all that sort of shit. Can he have just been like, fuck you, I'm gonna. <laughs> You know? Well, I think Rob was ultimately a tragic character, wasn't he? I mean, mm. he made a fatal mistake. Maybe it wasn't a fatal flaw. It couldn't have been a tragedy because it wasn't a fatal flaw of his that we saw, you know, like Hamlet and his indecisions. Um, but with Rob, certainly he had a terrible misjudgment about the impact of his decision. Yeah. And I mean, that, that comes was... with being 16 or 17 as well, right? You know? Yeah, right. right. Yeah. It's interesting as well. Like, um, you know, that both it John explains the and... hormones even more. Had he been like yeah, 50 yeah. or something, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. <laughs> Difference, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's that that I mean, the, the same sort of thing is just both happened to Rob and to uh, and to to John, and they obviously, uh, you know, it it it's dealt with it, it it pans out in different ways. They both break their oaths, um, right? Yeah. By banging some chick, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, yeah, that's um, true. That's an interesting yeah. parallel. Yeah. Yeah. And boys they both will be boys. Women. Yeah, What's and, that? Then both, and, and both the women end up dead. Yeah, exactly. Sucks to be them. Uh, yeah. And, you know, yeah. The, um, that was one of the things I didn't like about the show is, is, is the focus on that relationship. You know, like there was this whole kind of romantic comedy thing that went on between Rob and, and the, the, the nurse woman, you know, and it was, it was way more in focus, but whereas in the books, like we never had anything from Rob's perspective. It was always from Catelyn's perspective. And so we only kind of saw their relationship as kind of a distant thing through, through Catelyn's eyes. Right. Um, and so, you know, and, and I felt like there was too much of the show taken up. Obviously it's a TV show. So you need the sex, the drugs and all that sort of shit. But, you know, I felt like too much of the show was, or that season was taken up with, with that little romantic relationship thing where, where it could have been put into things like Arya or Tyrion or something like that, you know? Well, so, I think it um, gives more of a rationale to his decision because yeah. you see how, yeah, how see, just, he is. Yeah. I mean, like, like I say, just in the book, you don't have Rob's perspective right. at all. So, so um, that's not as much of a, a thing, I suppose, you know, it's yeah, more about but then, Yes. No, that's true. I mean, it's def it's it's definitely a difference. And I think so for viewers of the show, it's his decision. You see him caught up in it. And yeah, yeah. this is it's, it adds a bit more to the tragedy, I think, side of it. And then, of course, yeah. the impact of getting to know her character then at the Red Wedding, there's mm. there's more of an emotional impact as well, I yeah. would argue. And then you get all those great reaction videos of people watching the Red Wedding. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I was cut up by that man. Like, cause I, I I had to read that bit like a couple of times. I read and I was like, wait, no, what, what? I went back. No, no, wait, wait, what? No, right. ah! you know, it was one of those bits in the books where you're just like, fuck, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, I know Martin. He's ruthless, and you know, sort of one of the things you love to hate about him. Yeah, yeah, I know. I um, I, I take qualms with the with the he just kills off all your favorite characters kind of thing. I mean, I know it's kind of a trope at this point, 
but I don't know. I, I feel like it's just it's just a real world, you know, that that's kind of what the world is. It's a real world with real people and real stuff happens and people die, you know, that, that I don't, I don't feel like he's, I mean, maybe with Ned, maybe, you know, the initial killing off for me, that, that could have been a thing or whether that is just like, you know, like Rorschach in, um, in the Watchmen, right? The, uh, there's an interview with the guy who wrote the Watchmen. And at the end, uh, do you guys know the Watchmen? The, the book? Um, the, the... I don't. But uh, and the sweet's gone on. Uh, I'm mute again. So just you're just you. In, you blah, 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 it's you and me. It's so monologue. Me about, it's my, yeah. Okay. Oh, so, it's Michael's monologue. Yeah. So in 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 the Watchmen, there's a character called Rorschach, who is this kind of uh, re rebellious character, I suppose. He's very disillusioned with the world and the stuff that that, that that's going on. Uh, and he, in the end, uh. I don't want to ruin the whole thing for you, but basically he dies in the end. And what the, what the writer of the story said was because of what Rorschach's character was, there was no way that he could think of otherwise than having the character killed because he, as the character was compelled by his convictions to, to go and do, he, he would have had to go and do these other things. And, uh, and and so, which would lead him to have to be killed, and I wonder whether that is is playing a part in the in the same thing with Ned. I mean, like he he was driven by his convictions to that situation, and and there's not necessarily a way out of that other than to have him killed. You know, um, so it. I, I don't know. I, I feel like I feel like this this uh, this cry of oh, I just wants to kill off everyone is just kind of a cop out. You know. Yeah, so my thoughts on it come a little bit more abstractly, like from what I've read about the writing process and what other people who read a lot more books than me say about it. A good friend of mine basically was not at all surprised at, 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 at uh, Ned's death because it's quite often the case that if you have a story that centers around the children, a parent has to die in order to kind of get out of the way in order for other things to happen. So on the sure. one hand, yeah, uh, Ned was a, a tragic character in that he had these sort of, like almost, he was honorable to a fault or to a fatal fatality in this case. Mm. You know, he confronted Cersei and basically showed his hand, not realizing that she had way more power than he realized. Yeah. Um, and was willing to act in ways that he would not consider. Uh, mm. She was an, a surprising enemy. And yeah. um, so in that sense, he might have been in that way, his character, it was a natural ending, right? In so far as he, you know, um, tried to be an honorable man all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of the books, without his death, then Rob doesn't develop, Bran doesn't develop, er you know, the Sansa and Arya don't go on their way. So sometimes when a character gets killed off, the question is, what hole is that creating then for other things to happen to characters that will fill that vacuum? Mm. And um, I think it's it's probably a very deliberate process on the writer's part as to when to kill off a character because you have to think about the storyline implications of that and where mm. you would take it next. And, and well, next yeah, you see, you couldn't you couldn't just kill off characters willy nilly because I mean, right. like this this is a very uh, developed world like it's got a huge history and a huge you know uh, all the stuff inside it and killing off a character wouldn't just have no effect it's gonna it's gonna have a huge effect on the rest of on the rest of the world right and, and you know you see you see even the loss of Jamie's hand the effect that that has on so much stuff you know um, so, so having those you know it's it's those putting characters um, you know if you just had characters going along their merry way and being comfortable the whole time, you wouldn't have a story. It would just be a boring, you know, Cersei and Jamie sitting down to a cup of tea and, and talking about the weather, you know, it's the, right. that's, that would, that would not be an interesting story. So you have to have those, um, uh, those tragedies, which really uh, rip the character and, and push them in different directions and, and, and get them to, uh, you know, test, themselves as a character and see what they would right. do you know yeah exactly. and like you say you, you, yeah you wouldn't have Arya going off over to the over the narrow sea if 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 uh if ned hadn't died you wouldn't have um yeah you wouldn't have rob stepping up all this mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff you know 
Yeah, and there's also, you know, if you want to take the a step higher, what family did we enter the book through? The stocks, yeah. You know, and at some point, that's kind of your anchor, you know. So you see, I think, at least for me, my experience was I sympathize with the family very much. Mm. But the fact is, by the third and fourth books, you're going to, if you really are going to experience them, you need to have a wider sympathy. Mm. You know, so by taking out Rob... <laughs> Caitlin, just, you know, reducing it down to not so much the Starks as as individual Starks. Mm. Then you're, you've got more space for um, opening up, you know, like the Iron Islands and seeing other characters and uh, picking up other storylines because you're not kind of always looking for the Stork, Stark storyline. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, totally. Because there is definitely, um, I mean, you could – you pick up characters, you know, when you go to like, when you go to Dawn and you, you, you start learning about the stuff down there and you, 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 um, catch up with the, do you, yeah, the, the, in the, I think in the fifth book, you start, um, hearing stuff from that knight who's protecting the Targaryen child, or you find out as a Targaryen child, you know, so you get these other stories that kind of emerge, um, as time goes along. And then, and then it kind of, reveals more about the world because because that's another thing is the world is a character in itself right you you have Definitely. this and and so to 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 get a more well-rounded understanding of the world and and the things that have happened you know the doom at valeria and 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 the 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 battle of um you know the the the, the, the battle for king's landing and all those other things to get all that i mean it, the stuff from the iron islands you know uh, how how the, the the iron people kind of work um, and all that stuff you can't and, and all the all the stuff that's happening up north you can't have all that stuff unless you have perspectives from those characters and i mean i suppose you could just get more characters in but then i suppose it gets kind of bogged down and stuff um but yeah you get that that world development the character of the world really developing when you um when you see those things which is which is important obviously you know right and then it just yeah. as you said it, it mirrors the temporary the violent nature of the story of the world itself the the fact that people do die um and yeah. people die young and for no good reason and you know it leaves a loss in your in your experience of that you know book now that's yeah also happening to the characters in the book you know so oh, oh. hey y'all sorry about that my computer went all wonky oh weird. that's all right we just kept talking Wait. We can hey, see how you just kept talking and talking. Hey, nice to see you. Right? <laughs> We're just talking about um, uh, how, uh, you, you know, the, the, the trope of, of, of George R. R. Martin just killing everyone off as a character and, and how I feel, well, I, I was saying I feel like that's a bit of a cop-out to say. Um, and, and, and the actual purpose of, of, of character and how that affects other characters and how the loss of a character you know, affects the world and other characters and the, 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 the character of the world itself, you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't necessarily think that it's a, it's a cop out. Um, I think that it's, it's obviously, you know, part of it is he's trying to defy the kind of Tolkien um, trope of, you know, the good guys win and the bad guys lose. And that's, you know, that's not even Tolkien. That's just all, you know, that's just a lot of a, a, a trope amongst a lot of fiction and particularly like fairy tales. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it. I think it, what it does is it creates. You know, the death of Eddard Stark. When I first saw Game of Thrones, even though I kind of knew it was coming, the death of of Eddard Stark was a shock. You know, mm -hmm. it was it. It's her. It, and and it wasn't just a shock for me as a reader or as a watcher. It was a shock for them as a a society. You know, he wasn't supposed to die. And I think that his his death in particular is um, emblematic of the way George R. R. Martin uses death in his stories of to not just shock the reader, but to shock um, the political circumstances in the book, you know. Um, and I think and I find it refreshing. I, I enjoy um, I don't want to say I enjoy their deaths, but certainly I enjoy um, the repercussions reading about or, or watching <laughs> or watching the fallout from mm. um, their uh, uh, their loss, right? If it's mm. Arya and sort of how she ends up dealing with her father's death by um, trying to trying to regain some semblance of her life as a Stark and then ending up saying, you know what, to hell with it. Um, I'm just going to go to Bravos because, excuse me, because that's kind of where my, my journey is taking me. Um, 
or whether it's Cersei having to deal with the political fallout of her son killing a person that he clearly should not have killed. Um, either way, um, the way that the characters interact with death and deal with death, you know, the way Cersei deals with her father's death or her brother, you know, the, the way she deals with her father's death in the books is like amazing, um, is, you know, um, for, for people out there in the audience, uh, she, you know, spoiler, uh, she discovers, they discover that he was with Shay, and so she's like, her first reaction is to tell them, you didn't see a whore here, there wasn't a whore here, um, the way that she's still trying to uphold her father's image so much so that she says, burn the tower of the hand to the ground. Um, even though you could have just removed her body, you could have done all these other things, but the shock of, of her, of, of this man that she loved um, being killed by a person that she was always distrustful of and always thought was going to be the, dis the downfall of her family um, is, is so interesting and it adds to the complexity of her character. So I, I can't say that it's a cop-out. I think that... Um, for the most when part, when I say, when I, when I say cop out, I was, I was, uh, I was referring to to people saying, uh, you know, oh, George Araman just just kills a bunch of characters off that I love. I think that right, that right. is a cop out. I, 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 I think that there's a deeper reason, uh, and and which oh, adds yeah. a lot more meaning to the story, which I think you've you've outlined pretty well. Another way to look at this would be right. the, as you were saying, the deaths are not just sort of random. They have massive plot, and especially they have usually in the plot political elements. I was kind of thinking while you guys were talking, um, and there was, um, what's the name of um, Robert's brother who tried to rebel? Renly? Not the Stan. Renly. Yeah. Renly. Um, when he died, of course, we saw the power of, of, of the woman in red. Yeah. Um, Right. Right. And then there were, you know, um, there was Ned's death, which was huge. You know, uh, Joffrey's death, which was huge. I mean, so the, the death of the, Rob's death had a profound political impact. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. go back and look back on who he's killed off. What you should be looking at is what was the impact of that person's death on the story? That's how you should judge yeah. the deaths. Definitely, I agree with that wholeheartedly. And from from everybody from John, you know, we don't even know John Aaron, right? You know, he's 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 oh, an yeah. ancillary. We only ever hear about him. He's yeah. an ancillary character, really. It's all off. Yeah. Right. But that that his death is the thing that kicks off the story, and and in a lot of ways, you know, you could argue is the is the catalyst for for all of Game of Thrones, the book, and really all the events of Game yeah. of Thrones. Yeah, well, it's got that. It's running that 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 whole thing is kind of running through the um uh, through the first book and quite a lot of of other you know the the mystery of of his death. You know, the people starting to. I mean, that's that. <coughs> excuse me. That's one of the things that that um that Ned, uh, you know, discovers that 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 right. he was actually you know. So that that's a huge part, and that's a that's a huge part of why uh, Ned then died is because of because of john aaron's death and then yeah so it's it, it's quite interesting that that um a character we've never even met uh yeah that's cool i like that yeah and i i and in a, in a lot of ways it's um runs parallel to the way that rhaegar you know rhaegar is not oops, oh god what's happening here um echo in a lot of ways, yeah. uh, Rhaegar is this, is similar. Um, we never see him. We never mm. talk. We don't. You know, we, we only ever hear about Rhaegar. But mm. we see that Rhaegar Rhaegar's death has a profound impact on the story from a character we've never really heard from or seen or heard even dealt with. You know, so yeah, yeah. I I agree with Christy. You know, wholeheartedly as I said before, uh, the the deaths in the Song of Ice and Fire and in Game of Thrones are more about people's reactions to them and less about the person dying mm. of themselves. Well it's it's um it's it's uh challenging things that that happen to characters, right? I mean so like even even Bran being pushed from the tower, I mean he doesn't die, uh, but he loses the he uses loses the loot he loses the use of his legs. <laughs> um That's a bit of which, a tongue twister. yeah that is um that which obviously has a big impact on his life. Um, but then that also has such a huge impact on the relationship between the Lannisters and the Starks, you know, like, like, like um, Lady Stark um, capturing Tyrion, which, which right. has that whole thing going on, you know, so that all because of, because of what happened with, um, 
uh, with Bran, and then and then it, it, you know it coming to light later, it was uh, you know the because the, the, then the guy they, they got the dagger. That that's the whole thing. Yeah, that's right. Because there was the dagger, right. and then she realized that it was Tyrion's, and then da 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 da, da all this sort of business. So and and so that kicks off like like Catelyn's sort of journey that way. And so that whole relationship between the Lannisters and the Starks, which gets blown out of proportion because of the way, because of um, uh, Catelyn capturing Tyrion. Um, all that sort of business, and all of that, but just because you know, uh, Cersei and 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 Jamie were getting it on in the tower, you know, right? And they couldn't, you know, couldn't find yeah. a nice, you know, sequestered spot to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I always was like, guys, it's the freaking north. I mean, for God, just take some horses and ride out, and you'll find a place, you know. <laughs> but um, but yeah, yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I agree that that. <laughs> So much of the story, the catalyst for, for the events that we, you know, we talk about and, you know, you hear endless videos about so much of the catalyst are just, you know, misunderstanding or people, people's misfortune being blown out of proportion, you know, and, and certainly I always looked at the capture of Tyrion as the instigation for the War of the Five Kings, the real instigation versus like um, Ned uh, uh, finding out about the incest. Hmm. Or getting attacked in the street. Um, yeah, sure, that, sure. All that's a result of of Catelyn's actions. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's it. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I'd agree. I'd agree. I sometimes wonder if he's got a, a board with like all the different characters on with strings, kind of going to different plot points and their motivations at different stages, because uh, it's so much to keep track of. Oh my god! It I know, is. right? It's just I, yeah. I don't think I could. I couldn't. Like, I, I mean, I love the story. I can barely keep track of all the characters now. <laughs> you know? Um, so, oh, so, so for George, I'm sure he's got to have some kind of, like, giant chart that you know, <laughs> spells out, you know, okay, this person and this person. Well, hey. guys, I have to say, this has been amazing, and we could keep going. Uh, and I would love yeah. to do this again and keep going, but it's way past my bedtime. And it's just <laughs> night. So I'm going to pop out. But you guys should keep going, and I'll just catch it after I've slept for a while. Okay, for okay. sure. Thank you so much, Christy, for coming. I really so appreciate it. Fun. And I know we basically, for the, the first hour and a half just or two hours, talked about women, but we, so we should do another one where we talk about men, the male characters. Yes, too. definitely, definitely. Hashtag, so we're, we're going to make this. Men. Yes, exactly. <laughs> what about the men? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Yeah, Have a good one. You. Get some rest. Okay. Bye. Bye, Christy. Bye, Michael. Bye. And it what are we came talk about down now? to two. To but ten, and then there were two. <laughs> oh man, there's just so much to talk about. I, I, um, right? Like, I, I mean, God. Okay, so you weren't here when I talked about Melisandre as my favorite character, right? So no, hit me. Okay. I used so, to date. A, I used to date a girl who looked like Melisandre. Oh, oh, hey, that's what <laughs> yeah. I'm about. Um, <laughs> Mel, I love Mel because I feel like one Mel is Mel is the type of person who has gained her own power. She's from the lowest social class. She was a slave, and mm. so she has, through her own you know guile, wit, and her ability to move through the church, has become her own person with her own powers and is able to wield those powers. She doesn't intimidate people with dragons. You know, she's she's just intimidating on her own, and I yeah, find yeah, yeah. that. I find that very interesting when you juxtapose like her position as a woman from who's come from slavery to a woman mm -hmm. like Daenerys or like Sansa, who regardless of kind of their own individual powers still can always rely on the fact that her name is Daenerys Targaryen or her name mm -hmm. is Sansa Stark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that, I mean, that kind of gets ripped away from, from Danny at the end of the first book, right? She, she definitely, I mean, she's got the dragons, like we said, that the dragons are the things that are kind of her bargaining chip, right, that, that she can right. use. Um, but she definitely gets to a kind of down to a place where she's she's kind of got nothing, you know, like when she loses, uh, you know, Carl and all of her, all of her, um, her Kalasar and all that sort of business, you know, right. so she, so she, she definitely gets down to it. But I said, yeah, yeah, not a, still not, I suppose, as low as, as, as a slave. Um, I, um, I suppose it's kind of interesting as well uh, because she, 
yeah, you you hear about you 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 hear uh, you, you her reputation precedes her in the book, right? Like when you're when you're mm -hmm. hearing about her, because you 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 hear about Stannis and right. and this red woman, you know, and you you kind of get that sort of you know thing, uh, which is which is really interesting. And because there's also the guy, there's the there's the the legend of the 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 knight with the fiery sword, right? Who turns out to be uh, um who 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 turns out to to uh, he has that little set that he moves around the place and revives people right <laughs> oh oh but, um 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 Thoros Amir and Barrett and Darian yeah 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 that's the guy man you yeah. got some knowledge go <laughs> you know what you know what i have pushed out so much real knowledge for game of thrones <laughs> knowledge i'm ashamed i'm ashamed it's cool man it's really cool i wish i could retain that much um i uh maybe if i went through and read them again I did read. The, I've read the first book a couple of times, and I think I got maybe into the second one a second time. But I only read the other the other ones once each. It just took a yeah. long time. <laughs> so I, I've only read time. the I've only read the series like once all the way through. But I've seen yeah. like I've seen the show so many times all the way through. It's like you know, sure, sure. Yeah, I can. I, 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 I'm always like quoting it too. I'm always like, we all must choose young or old <laughs> man or woman. Like I'm always doing that. I, I've gotten so deep. I've gotten so deep into it at this point. I've started like learning Dothraki. Oh, wow. Seriously. Yeah. And so I've had to like hope, right. Well, I've had to I, hope myself. I see something about there being like a course now, like at a university where you yeah, can take a Dothraki yeah. course. Oh yeah, That's you can take Dothraki. You can take it online. Um, I forget the website. I'll send it to you um, when I find it. But you can take it online. You can learn it from um, their uh, the scripts. Is, so, is that something that George, uh, you know, developed in the? You know, because like with Tolkien, right? He he like wrote yeah. languages. That was one of his things. He he created languages. Is that something that George did, or is that something that kind of developed after the fact when they had to put them um, into the show and stuff? It's interesting. God, I wish <laughs> I wish my boyfriend was here. He would he would be. We had this argument like like two weeks ago. Um, George he he created certain words, Kalasar, call you know, just some yeah, of yeah, the yeah. kind of smaller language pieces. And then when the show came about, they actually got a language expert to come in and to fill in and create the grammar for. And you know, George was a part of that. So he he has always been intimately involved but i would argue not quite as involved as like tolkien was um in the creation of the sure. languages sure, um, sure, sure. but but no you boy cool. you boy yeah so it's it's um it's yeah, kind of anyway, hard back to back to to, to back to the beat. Melisandre. <laughs> back to mel um, right that's yeah, my girl uh, back to my back yeah. to my girl mel um back to my mel girl. right <laughs> um Mel, so you don't. We when we first meet Mel, we see her through Master Crescent's eye. I'm not. Is it Crescent? No. God damn it. What's his name? Um, Crescent. Right. We see her through Crescent's eyes, which yeah, is the yeah, Maester, yeah. and she's this kind of beautiful and evil and all of these, you know, wonderful things that you know, all these terrible things. But um, mm. and both kind of wonderful and terrible. But then you see but then when we get her point of view chapter you sort of see a softer side of her you sort of see this person who is struggling with something mm. you don't well, quite know that, that tends to be how it be is, right? how it always is in the yeah. book like i said about with jamie and with cersei and stuff you know you you see them from yeah. other people's perspective and the way that they are and then you so you get inside their head and it just it, it, it messes with you and you're like damn it i wanted to hate you so much you know right yeah I mean, that's what you're also mm. i wanted to hate cersei so bad like, but she's such a sympathetic person. Like, she needs my help. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I just want to help her. I want to give her a cuddle. I, a cuddle. I do. I just want to be like, Cersei, I'm going to help you do this, baby, because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> let's, come let's, let's come on. Let's be real. Let's do real talk. Yeah. See, I, um, I, one of the things that just come to my head is that, you know, one of the things about the world in general as well is this presence of magic that is kind of dying mm -hmm. out, I suppose. It's kind, I suppose it's kind of similar to, yeah. to, to like Lord of the Rings because in Lord of the Rings, the, you know, magic has been kind of, you know, a, a thousands of years has been forgotten about, you know, the ring and the Sauron and all that sort of stuff. Magic has kind of faded away and, you know, the, the elves are moving away and magic has kind of slowly been drained from the world. And it seems kind of yeah. like what this is happening in Game of Thrones now. And we see little snippets of magic and stuff happening. So there definitely is a magic that is happening in the world and people do manipulate it like, like the, the Red Lady. 
um, you know, and, mm-hmm. the, and, the, and the church of, of, of the light as well tends to, you know, um, and, and it's interesting because, because it makes you, you know, all of the people in the world tend to believe in sort of higher beings and all that sort of stuff. You know, there's the, there's the, the, the nine, the, the nine or the seven, I can't remember. The, the, the seven. The, the seven. There's the seven. And then there's the, the, uh, you know, there's the, the start, you know, the, the old the gods weird, and you know, gods, right. all that sort of business. And then there's Valeria and there's all that sort of stuff. And pe- you've got what people believe about the world and how it works and, and the magic and the gods and all that sort of stuff. And you, you know that there's magic, but mm-hmm. you're not sure where to place it. You know, you're not sure whether you're not sure whether the stuff that these people are believing are, is actually magic or whether it's just superstition. And that's a fantastic. I, it's you know, because oh, yeah, cause yeah, definitely some of it is superstition, but there is also oh, yeah. definitely magic. You know, and it's like ah, oh, which is the real stuff and which is the not, and which is you know, like the Doom of Valeria. You know, there was there was obviously mm-hmm. kind of a magical society, but mm-hmm. the doom just appears to be like a volcano that erupted. But it's got this right. whole mystical surrounding to it, right? And we um, don't know. And that's the one thing I love about is what we don't know. You know, I always yeah. love mystery. And so the idea that you've got this society that's just wiped out and nobody actually knows what happened to them. We just assume that eh, it was just, you know, some, the, the, there are all kinds of assumptions. One, that their magic got away from them and they couldn't control the place that they lived anymore or yeah, yeah. that it was just some natural occurrence. Like kind of has right? the, it, it's a, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, the comet as well. I forgot about the comet. Is that is you know there's this there's this comet, and everyone's got their own superstitions about what the comet is, and then it kind of just goes away, and you're like, yeah, oh. yeah. And you don't, but it's kind of you, lingering there the whole time. Yeah, and you don't, and and what I love about it is it's it's there, and you're sort of like, what's up with the red comet? Who's you know, Daenerys is following it, you know, like like it yeah. means something. Um, and the red, Osha, the red woman as well, and yeah, yeah, she she yeah. thinks it's a sign, and Osha even says, you know, common only means one thing, boys, dragons, you know. Yeah. The, to me, yeah, one of the yeah, best yeah. lines in the whole show, dragons, and you're like, yeah, dragons, right. <laughs> yeah, dragons, I love dragons. The um, right, and, and I don't even like dragons as like a literary like device. I don't like stories with dragons too much, but this is the one I, I think I like this one because you grow up with them, right? You you're there from the moment that Rhaegal and Viserion and Drogon are born. And so yeah, you sort yeah, of yeah. grow with these dragons and you're like, oh my babies are getting older. <laughs> yeah, and 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 with the comet thing as well, again it's it's which how much of it is magical and how much of it is just superstition because everyone out everyone has their own ideas about what it means and about right. what it is and their own superstitions about it but wh- whether you know we see that that there definitely is some magic involved with the red church but but whether that's related to the comet or not well, well we don't even know we don't even know because when, in melisandre's point of view chapters she talks mm. about having all these pockets with powders and potions we don't even know that the church has any magic all their magic could be based on alchemist tricks for all we know mm. right but she has that um, she has that, that that shadow baby and and they also can, well, yeah, you know, and the, that's where it gets confusing right because she yeah. has the shadow baby she has the vision she can see mm. but and and the 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 guy can heal people, you know, with his and yeah. But again, I suppose what so what you're saying is you're not you're not it's not necessarily tied to the church and therefore a god, right? You're saying that maybe right. it's other stuff. Yeah, it could be anything, and that's the that's mm. the fun part about it is kind of the speculation of well, what is actually driving their magic? Why why do they have these abilities, and are they real abilities, or is it just a matter of? Um, trickery and optics yeah. but then you've got things like the like the uh, the um what do they call them the you know what, what like bran is he's a he's a green the, seer right right the green seers and the wogs yeah 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 so they're, they're, they're definitely able to to get inside people's minds so that's that's some magic shit right there Right, right. And and yeah. that's what's and, and, and like you said, that's what's so interesting about the story is there are these magical elements that are clearly real right for mm. them um, but then there are these other elements that claim to be magic but that we don't know if they are or not. Mm. Have you read um, Have you read The Name of the Wind? No, I haven't. So The Name of the Wind uh, is this book, uh, a fantastic book. It's got two, there's, there's two parts at the moment. There's a third part coming out at some point by a guy, a guy named Patrick Rothfuss. And he, uh, so it's about a character, his name's Kvothe. And Kvothe is, uh, is a legend uh, in this mm-hmm. world. 
it's, it, and and so just it, it kind of popped in my head because we were talking about the you know, myth and legend and and superstition and all that sort of stuff and how those sort of things um, develop. And so Kvothe has this 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 veil of of mystery and and um, and legend and superstition surrounding him. He's got all these names like the, the caller of lightning and 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 the, the bringer of fire and all this sort of business. Um, and he uh you know and 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 so people with their limited understandings of the world and stuff you know um there's mm -hmm. there's people in different positions of power because there's people who are learned and they understand because there definitely is magic in the world but it's it's pretty well understood how it works but there are people who uh, don't understand how it works and they obviously see it in a different light though so so right. quoth um so the story uh, is basically from is is both telling his life story from when he was a child going through the university, which is a place where people learn basically uh, this magic stuff called sympathy, where they Ooh. can they can bind uh, things, and it's it's very you know like scientifically understood. So it's like a mm -hmm. it's like science fiction, but in a fantasy setting. Um, cool. And he kind of goes through these different parts of his life where things kind of happened, and that gained him this this veneer of, 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 uh, legend, you know, like th that make people think him to be this thing that he's not necessarily that he's great. He's really, really good. He's, he's good at a yeah. lot of things. Um, but people think that he's like this God, right. Um, and it's just kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's a similar thing, I suppose, like, like a people's perspective of the world, um, and, and their superstitions and stuff and which of that is actually real and which of it is not. And that mystery it's, it's, uh, it's quite fascinating, you know? I, oh uh, yeah, and and well, that and the name of the wind. The name of the wind, yeah. Uh, Got and it. The, okay, and the, I'll definitely the, check it out. The follow-up book is uh, Wise Man's Fear, which is also very good. Cool, cool. I mean, I I agree. It's fascinating. It, the, the one thing about Game of Thrones that I love is you can talk for seven hours about the same shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, yes. You can just go on and on because it's so in depth and all, and you can theorize and you can have fun with it and you can apply it to kind of real world circumstances. Like I, when I when I'm like YouTubing, I'm halfway thinking about Game of Thrones all the time. You know, <laughs> so like yeah, I'm like oh, you know, this person you trying to act like Cersei Lannister, you a terrible motherfucker. You know, <laughs> um, I I. And, and I think it, that's what, for me, has always charmed me and made me, you know, so interested in is that it's just, it, it's not only filled with our own history as people, you know, from English mm -hmm. history to African history to American history, there's so much of, you know, us kind of in the story, um, mm -hmm. but the, all of the elements that you can take from that and then apply back to the real world are just, you know, fascinating. So, you know, we could sit here for, for the next three hours and talk about whether magic in their world is real, fake, where it comes from, um, whether it'll endure, what, what's the role of the dragons in terms mm -hmm. of magic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, like, um, uh, uh, the, the parallel, I suppose, uh, that I that I draw between those those two books and the ideas is, is yeah, people who who understand magic. See, that's the thing is it, it's magic in the sense that it's it's magic to people who don't understand it, but then it's science to people who right. do understand. It, you know, so so the people, you know, you you'd have you've got like a, a continuum, right? Like a like a you've got over at this side, you've got the people who fully understand exactly what's going on and how to achieve those mm -hmm. those those goals. And then over here, you have the people who don't understand it all and wouldn't have a clue of how to do it. And then you could be somewhere along that continuum, right? So people like right. Melisandre, who she may not fully understand what's going on, but she may know that when she does certain things, certain things will happen. But she doesn't necessarily right. know why. Um, but, yeah, it's a, it's an interesting um, – again, and like with Bran, you know, he, he, he slowly becomes right. more understanding about – he, because first of all, he's just dreaming. Like he, he, he just thinks it's a dream that he's, he's running through the forest and all that sort of stuff. And eventually, he starts to understand right. a bit more about being able to get inside his wolf and, and then get inside and, Hodor and and all that, you know. And Maester Lewin, you know, tells him these are just dreams. You're just, you know, he drugs him to get him yeah. to stop having the dreams. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. True. True. And not until he meets uh, the um the the the, the frog children. That he, he starts to <laughs> the frog children. <laughs> and then when they call them, they're like, they're, they're frog people or something, is it? Frog people. 
<laughs> there, um, Mira and Howland read The Cranic Men. Why did I think frog people? Why did I? Why did I? Think that? <laughs> I don't know. I Listen, that. I don't know what you. I don't know what you do in your bedroom when I'm not around, honey. <laughs> I thought they because I, I thought that that's kind of how the people because they live in like the swamps, all right, or, or, or in and around. Yeah, and they know how of, to get. And and so I thought there was like they they got they like called them frog people or something. <laughs> Well, I think that the frog people is sort of a, a pejorative that's used in yeah. the universe for the Kranich men. Yeah, that might be what it is. Maybe I'm just making shit up. Oh, is this know. fish going to fall? I'm, I'm halfway frying fish while I'm talking to you, and I'm like, is this fish going to fall apart? I'm going to have to melisandre this fish. Um, Boom! <laughs> that's funny. Have a shadow baby and have it cook the fish for me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but... I, I would say that the dragons, whatever has happened in their universe, the dragons have reinvigorated magic, you know, um, yeah. as a force. Well, that's kind of what they, they sort of say that as well, right? Because, uh, you know, the, the people talk about how their powers have kind of been, you know, like the, 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 um, the night guy, doesn't he kind of talk about how his, you know, it wasn't working for ages and he was kind of a joke and now suddenly he can use that stuff again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, Athoros does yeah. talk about, yeah. Yeah, and um, so so the dragons have kind of been a catalyst for that, maybe. Oh, That's yeah. The thing. It's, and, a um, it's a maybe. Right, because we don't because we don't know. I mean, if no. some natural force, it could be the five thousandth year of the anniversary of the Doom of Illyria, and that's doing it. You know, or we it just, could be the, no the, idea. the White Walkers. The White Walkers come. I mean, yeah. The, now the, that's. Yeah, I don't know a lot yeah. about the White Walkers, so don't 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 hit me too much because I, I still don't. I mean, like at the I, end of the first I book, won't. I, no I'm not like that. I won't. I'm not a, a person who judges based upon That's how much right. you know about Game of Thrones. Um, <laughs> um but I will but yeah, say, like, go ahead, babe. No, no, you go for it. I was just going to say they, they at the end of the fifth book, we still don't know a lot about them. Uh, it's true. We don't, we don't know really anything about them. Even with the knowledge like season six has given us, we still mm. don't know anything about them really, you know? Okay. Okay. And I yeah. think that that's the, you know, the, the mystery surrounding the White Walkers is probably the greatest mystery in Westeros. It's who are these mm. creatures and what do they want? And cold hands. <laughs> that is yep, and, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Because he's a, a, as far as I could tell, he was like a White Walker as well, but a sentient one. That's what I. Yeah, he's like a nice. Tell. He's he's one of the good ones. He's one of the good ones. Good. Okay. <laughs> um, he's a he's a good man, White Walker, and yeah. um, yeah, and in the series they've kind of merged. I won't spoil anything for you. Um, they've okay. kind of merged two characters, um, Cold Hands and another character together, and you're sort of like, oh. Um, Does but, the the other character happen in? The, or does he come later in the book? Or he hasn't even come in the book yet? He hasn't. Uh, he He's in the book. Um, early on in the books, yeah. I'm trying to remember. Uh, I don't think he even makes it to a Clash of Kings. I don't I don't think he makes it to an end of Game of, of Game of Thrones. So how do you, how do you, uh, how do you figure that he in the books. gets, how do you figure that he's merged with, with Cold Hands? Um, well, it's clear. It's clear from the series. I can't say it without spoiling it for you, honey. So I, I won't oh, do okay, that. Okay. So it's something that's um, it's revealed. It's revealed in the thing, is it? Yeah, it's revealed in the series. So I will. Okay, I'll let you. Cool. And it's not gonna. Yeah. It's not gonna happen in the books because they're t clearly two separate characters. I think. Um, okay. But I will say that. Um, Everybody, you know, people kind of knew once once they in the series it was clear like that's kind of where it was going. But in the books, it's it's obviously more obfuscated. But um, Cold Hands um, proves that it doesn't. You know, there's no such thing as like good or bad magic. And I don't. I think Cold Hands proves too that the White Walkers aren't good or bad necessarily. Yeah, yeah. They, they're they're just kind of a force. Right, and we we as as readers and them as characters don't understand them and don't understand mm. their language. Um, it's almost like um, the Native Americans in the first settlers, right? You yeah. you do, you don't know these people and you don't know what their intentions are. You're kind of characterizing them as bad because they almost you know they stand in your way of whatever your goals mm. are. But what's the same with the wildlife, right? Right. Yeah. But in reality, they're just people, you know, in, in the White Walker's case, they're not people, but you know what I mean? They're a thing, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. 
they're just they're just trying to survive like everybody else and we yeah. we're taught kind of by the books and by the series to treat them as this you know horrible force but they're they're just creatures you know yeah well i mean that's the that's this thing we've been talking about the whole time until you get it from their perspective you just you don't you know that's one of the things that george does in these is he is he the, the world is not black and white there's nothing everything's right. gray there's just gray is everywhere there's no there's no like definitive this is bad or this is good right it, it's always right gray. life is the gray yeah. yeah 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 and so i mean yeah that's that's interesting to think about um the oh, white Wolf god you've thing. fallen apart i'm turning my fish and so my fish just <laughs> fell apart he's just no, like no nope. no the fish is going i should have got that shadow baby right yeah you should have got that shadow baby that would have helped you out heaps, but, right? <laughs> yeah i guess so but you know what what would mel do she'd keep it pushing so that's what i'm gonna do uh, <laughs> um i reckon you could tell me who that character is sure. because i'm I, i'm not too invested in the tv show i'm just worried about spoilers for the books oh oh um in the uh um benjamin stark who is eddard's brother who we oh, meet in right the, yeah 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 yeah, right. yeah 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 totally yeah, he, in the series, he's now like been merged with Cold Hands. So okay. he's the guy in the forest who's going to save Bran. Um, mm. And um, it, the situation's a bit different just because he's catching Bran on the way back as opposed to catching him going. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's it. So it's basically Benjen and um, Cold Hands have been merged in the series. Yeah, I always wondered what was going to happen with Benjen because he never, he, he, he never kind of, I never find him right, in the book. He just disappeared. He disappeared. So he must come back. He, there must be something that he must come back at some point and later in the books. He must do because why? Why have him? There's, yeah. I mean, I suppose he's he's kind of a drive for for John to go into the Night's Watch, but it still seems mm -hmm. kind of odd that, you, you, that you've got no closure on that character whatsoever. There must be something. That uh, let me see if I can think of another character who kind of just floats away and never returns. Um, hmm, that's hard. Yeah. Uh, no, let me think. There's somebody, I was just talking about it too. God, dog it. Hmm. Is it like a minor character or a... <sighs> I can't even remember who it was now. Um, there's somebody who... Gendry. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember you. You put it in the title of this thing. What happened to Gendry? <laughs> mm -hmm. 